so we're gonna make hands today. I've already made a video with hands in it, but this is a separate video just kind of showing the hand by itself, as well as we're gonna make some magnetic wrist joints. So that's really fun. So we start off with an oval, we flatten it, we kind of use the move tool to give it that indent of the palm of the hand. Then we get the brush tool and we kind of build on where we want to be elevated on that hand. So right now this is the palm of the hand. And once again, just kind of moving stuff to get it in shape. Um, if you want, you can use your own hands as reference. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable in my mediocre ability to draw hands, so I didn't really use a reference. Um, plus, my hands just aren't very pretty. <laughs> and by that, I mean like my own hands. They're very short and stubby. So when it comes to reference, I can't really use my own hands. It wouldn't really work for most uh, projects. Um, so just kind of we're just kind of not going to use my own hand if you have nice hands with long fingers go ahead use your own hand or like even copy your hand if you do also have a stubby fingers but the thing that i'm going for right now does not have the same kind of hand type as me um so for the fingers i actually use the tube tool and I use this a lot for the anime figures I also have uploaded. So using that, I just have it on the path setting instead of the curve setting. And what you want to do for that is you want to just kind of place the dots where you want them. And then once it's okay, you kind of press like the green button. And then the yellow button you can use to create how, not create, but to make it as thick as you want it. And then you can kind of edit it from there to get the smoothed shape of the bottom of the finger. I do do that in a couple of seconds, but uh, for the finger, I mainly kind of get it into shape using the move tool, the smooth tool, and the crease brush. And that's basically about it. That's really all I used for the hands. Oh my gosh. Why does... <laughs> My clips keep like randomly freezing, which is so weird because before I sped them up, they were completely fine. Maybe there was some kind of corruption in the speed up. But yeah, you can see here I'm using the move tool to kind of just get it more in shape. And then the smooth tool with that on the highest strength, you can just kind of go at that at the tip and it will smooth itself out. So you could, there's no real like tips on how to get a perfect finger or anything. You just gotta kind of go with whatever reference or idea you have in your head. So you can see here I'm getting each of the individual joints and creases ready. Kind of moving everything. <laughs> failing and then going back realizing I messed it up and during this phase it's especially important to look at your finger from various angles you have to make sure that it doesn't just look good from one angle you have to make sure that it's going to actually work and function from any angle that you use so here we have we're kind of moving it to get that kind of connection to the rest of the hand and then using the crease brush, seeing that it, it's just not where I want it, seeing that the flattening brush can, um, can save it, it didn't. So a really good tool that I'm going to use is in that little grid area. You'll see me use it in a little bit. But in that area, if you go to the voxel section, here, I'm doing it right now. So in the voxel section, remesh it to just under 300. So the app on the iPad can handle a maximum of 300. Try to stay in the 260 to 290 something range. And then put it so that it keeps the sharp edges. 
after that, just click the remesh button and you'll and you'll get this result. If you see it, like um, it's significantly smoother. It's much more like a higher quality than it was previously. And here we are just cutting out those joints again. You can see it's kind of starting to look like an actual finger now. You can see the individual kind of joints sticking out of the top and you can see the kind of creases and the fleshier parts on the underside. Uh, for this hand, we are just going to kind of focus on one finger and then we'll just like go from there but on other hands where they are in all different positions you are going to have to do the exact same process on each individual finger for this one i'm just going to be kind of only using this finger okay decided to record when supper is going to be ready that's great um so I'm just trying to get this out like super fast because I still have to prepare for my class I'm doing tomorrow. Um, this past while has been my practicum for my teaching degree. This is my first practicum. So I still have <laughs> um, a year and a half to do four practicums. But this is my first semester. Um, I do have a 3D printer now. I set it up originally and then it wasn't printing how I want it to. And I I know it's my fault. I have to go back and try to find where I made a mistake. But I don't have the time currently to do that. So that's why this is getting kind of rushed out. Because I don't really have time to do this either. As you can see I just copy and paste it basically. Um, this is the same process I use on the body where... If you just kind of go to the two squares on top of each other, it copy and pastes a new one like that, and I just kind of move it and adjust it. I, I change it with the green button, kind of make it longer, and then just adjust from there. And that's basically it, just furthering the adjustments, trying to make him look more like hand. From here, even for the thumb and all that, it's basically just aesthetics. Um, it's the exact same process we already used, just kind of used in a different way. So for the thumb, we do the exact same thing, just the tube and all that. You can see I'm trying to pull all these areas to look more kind of elegant, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, um, for my practicum, I was originally just going to do notes, but it's the last day before winter break. So I am last minute changing it to an article activity where we are going to do stations and we're each going to have like a different article for each station. And it's just going to be like a little discussion class. Um, this particular class that I'm doing for this semester is very um, outgoing. They're very vocal, so these kind of assignments are very good for them. Um, I need to get that all done tonight. My mentor teacher is not going to be there tomorrow, so it's going to be me and a sub. And I'm like, panicking. <laughs> but it's not that much stress because I did um, buy candy bags and all that. I made custom candy bags for my class. Um, I don't think very much people are going to come. While I, when I was in school, I loved going to the last day because we usually just got to watch movies and get candy. Um, I was warned that barely anyone is going to show up. So I guess it's really interesting how different cultures of a school... Um, Oh, I don't mean like actual cultures. I mean like the culture of the school itself. How they kind of operate in different ways from school to school. Since I am working at a school that I did not attend. Oh, and here we see where I messed up. <laughs> so you see I tried to flatten it. And I messed it up too much. Now we're going ultra, ultra small. And while I haven't been using pen pressure... For any of my sculpting, have any of you guys used it? 
how has it been working for you? Because I don't have an Apple Pencil, I have just a stylus. So I found that the pressure sensitivity on these apps like Nomad or like Medibang, they don't really work. So I've just used, uh, you know, like whatever settings I've been manually setting my like pressure and strength on all my brushes. And it's just kind of like, is this worth it? Should I, should I go spend that like $150 to get pen pressure sensitivity? Is it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> but anyone that does have, that has been using pen pressure, is it like significantly easier? Like, do you notice a difference? One thing I really like is I've been seeing a lot of people using Nomad now, which is just amazing. I think it's really the best sculpting app on an iPad right now. I had Forger and I failed using it. I really didn't like it very much. I, I had used it like a couple for a couple of years previously. I never really made anything worth anything, though like nothing really came out how I wanted it. And then I did previously sculpt a head on 3D Builder on a laptop, but I really, well, I mean, I still have the head. It turned out great, but it, it just never, I could never achieve the level of detail that I'm doing in Nomad um, due to me not really knowing how to use 3D Builder very well. Um, and I know 3D Builder is made more for, like, technical stuff, so I guess me even sculpting a doll head on it is pretty cool, I guess? Um, and then I did try Blender at one point, but I, I still couldn't really get it where I wanted it. I wasn't happy with the results. Um, I could never sculpt anything that actually looked remotely like a head, so it is really nice that nomad is so easy to use and it's so beginner friendly like um i think i only had one tutorial and it was by my friend and they just kind of showed me how to hollow things out and like voxel merging and that's it and everything else from there i kind of just took it on my own and learned myself which is really fun but it also shows how easy it is because i don't know how to use technology I really don't understand how to use technology at all. Well, as seen with my 3D printer, seeing as I can't get it to work. I mean, I haven't really tried, so... I, it's, it's my fault. <laughs> hopefully, I'll be able to set it up this winter break, at least. Hopefully. But we will see, because I'm I'm illiterate when it comes to lots of computer stuff. My cat is trying to eat the wrapping paper, or not the wrapping paper, the shipping bubble wrap on one of my packages I got today. <sighs> so I got a... I got a head sculpted by letty cats on instagram and i also got my giveaway prize from holochi which is great i love getting stuff in the mail because it makes it feel like it's christmas all the time but yeah getting the getting the head from uh, from letty cat it's um it's 3d resin printed and it's like so nice to actually hold it and it makes me want a resin 3d printer but um i i cannot accommodate the fumes of a resin 3d printer right now i can accommodate the fumes of pla getting printed on an fdm printer but i just i cannot properly ventilate my room or house for a resin printer right now so just kind of gotta suck it up and try to get this 3d printer working um until i 
move out of my parents' house and can then buy a resin 3D printer. Um, since I'm, I'm, st I'm like, I'm still gonna live here while I'm in school. Um, it's really just the best way. Like, I don't have any school debt or anything. <sighs> but yeah, I would, I would love a resin 3D printer. They just, I, I love the results of this 3D printed head I have. I can't wait to do something with it. I do have a spare Miro doll old style girl body that I think I'm going to put her on. So I'm probably going to mod this neck hole on this head a bit more so that it fits. And then I will dye the Miro doll body. So then I'll also need to actually go and buy dye. Since I don't really have any that I can use right now. I have black plastic dye, like the dye more, but I don't have anything else. But that's, it, it also brings up a good opportunity to actually dye dolls since I do have a Aurora BJD like dog that I bought like a year ago. And that needs to also be dyed. Um, that one needs to be dyed yellow and I told myself I would do it and I just haven't. So I need to go buy that dye, and then I have to go buy dye for this body. So, hopefully I get stuff done. I guess maybe I should wait to see how much Christmas money I have. Um, since currently I do have two layaways open. I don't have doll layaways open very often. I think the two I have right now are like... Only the 4th and 5th layaways I've ever had open in this hobby. Like, every other time I usually buy in full. Um, but right now, because it is, like, winter, um, things are very unpredictable. And you never really know when you'll have to... Well, I never really know when I'll have to step up and pay for something in my house. Because you never know, like, what emergency can happen. Even for my money right now, um, my cat got sick and I had to pay for the first vet appointments because my mom didn't have money. Um, because the heating bills are more expensive in winter. We live in Canada. And then, um, Christmas also. So, like, she didn't have money. And then the second vet appointment for the checkup, um, I had to pay for some of that same reasoning but yeah any any other time of the year I tend to just buy in full or just <laughs> participate in one of my other hobbies I have since I, I'm in a lot of different hobbies but yeah I really wanted the yummy sweet stall ume and I open that in November and that glaeway will be done in February and then I also put the transparent green kelpie by uh, Melon Pan Dolls and Sleepy Sheepy on layaway so I have that layaway um, my final payment is due in May but I'm pretty sure I can pay it off like way earlier than that um, currently I have the money to do like two layaway payments but once again like you never know what could happen like who knows maybe I could spend that money and then like oops dog needs to go to the vet you know so I'm just kind of saving it until after Christmas so that I know like oh I got like this much Christmas money I could spend this much dollars <sighs> so yeah and then this March all my animals get booster shots except for one of them so my cat mia who is my cat that has no tail she's updated on all her shots she got her updated ones last year but my cat ruby my dog max um both need their updated shots they got their last shots like a few years ago and this year they are due for their updates uh, my cat Rocky needs one more updated shot. 
She got most of her updated shots last year, but she needs one final one that we didn't do because it the appointment to get it done was during our like third wave and we just didn't feel safe taking her out during then. So now we gotta make up for it and do it now. Well, in March. And then our two babies need their one year shots in March. So lots of shots getting done that year, that month. And that's gonna be really expensive. Um, all of the shots they need are $80 shots. So $80 shots times four cats and one dog. Uh, it, it adds up, adds up a little bit. Don't yell at that kitty cat. I'm gonna yell at Mia all I want. Mia, no, she yelled at you. <laughs> Mia! Oh no. <laughs> Drama. Your little pretty princess owner isn't gonna save you tomorrow. <laughs> She's toast. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Just background conversations. Oh, and then we bought a new cat tree, so that was really fun. These are all completely unrelated to what's actually being sculpted. But I've I've done a step-by-step -step process for all of these steps before. You just gotta gotta transfer them to this kind of task. Um, a lot of these things are already things that I've shown how to cut out and shape on the body series. This is more so just kind of showing um, which techniques I use for what. I can't remember. No, I think I did for the last hand video during our body video. I think I did different fingers for each of those. I hope. <laughs> So I guess if you really need that, then that would be a really good example. This is more so like a really simple, easy method. Um, and then I, I think for this video, it's much more self-explanatory since I am uh, filming it sideways. So you can actually, you can actually see the full screen being recorded. So you can actually see each of the tools and brushes that I use as opposed to the body video, which I filmed uh, vertically. So like part of the screen itself gets cut off. So on this one, it is much more viewable. And maybe I don't have to explain as much since I am assuming that you watched the body video. If you did not watch all of the body, body videos, I'll get to it. I'll probably also make like a quick speed sculpt, I guess, of sculpting a BGD head. Since the processes are like they are the exact same as body parts I have already done, you just have to apply them in different ways. I really just have to show the work needed to be done and I feel like if you're watching the video and you watched all the videos, you should be able to be like, oh, okay, so like the process I used for like this joint can be used here too. Cool. So that's really what I'm aiming for. And then, I don't know, I feel like I need to come up with a better way to do these kind of joints, like the hands and feet. Right now I either use this kind of flattened cylinder or the rectangle or um, an oval flattened, not an oval, a sphere flattened. And I don't know, none of them really give me the exact shape that I want. Maybe I have to sculpt my own individual shape to do it. But it just doesn't give me the exact shape that I kind of not expect <laughs> but not want either it's like the exact shape that i would like it to have i 
And yeah, I don't know if this hand is like masculine or feminine or like what doll I would use it for. It's pretty neutral, but that, that is how it's done. There's even a little space for you to put the magnet in so you don't have to drill it afterwards. Um, that's it, yeah. Okay, cool. See you when I sculpt ahead. <laughs>